I didn't carry out any research whatsoever about how is Japan, what is Japan like. Now I'm speaking for this one, I'm speaking from experience. If somebody had told me in my first year that almost five years later I will still be in this country, I'll say it's a lie. Don't come to Japan. If so, hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. It's Chilo here once again, as always. If you're new to my channel, uh, my name is Chioma, aka Chilu. I'm a Nigerian and I'm currently living and studying here in Japan. I've been living in Japan for about five, almost five years now, four years plus. And to be very honest, looking back at the last five years, I would say there's been a lot of disparities in how the quality of my life has been over the years one thing i'll tell you for sure is that i did not do any research i didn't carry out any research whatsoever about how is japan what is japan like how are japanese people like i didn't do in-depth research which is something that i applaud the people who are now out there on social media asking questions about the countries that they are planning to stay or go to is something i didn't do i'm not sitting down here to brag about it but, but another reason why i felt to be relaxed and i still took that step which is the huge step of coming here is because i had a few people that were in japan and people that had studied in japan i kind of had an inclination of how the country is i had people i could direct my questions to i had those kind of people so i won't categorically say my first year in japan was so terrible per se but i would say that as the years progressed you know and i got to know some things for myself and all those things my life significantly improved or got better but nevertheless shout out to the people who were very very useful and helpful to me settling into this country so what is today's video about today's video is basically about um i feel like now that a lot of people are asking the right questions are getting to know some things one of the things i would like people to know is the kind of mindset or the kind of the things you should know about japan not to scare anybody honestly is not to scare anybody. by the end of the day you're an adult if you've made up your mind that this is what you want to do or this is the country you want to go to nobody including chilo can spoil your mind it's just for you to make an informed decision right so today's video i title it don't come to japan if <laughs> don't come to japan if you know i get that some people who are watching me are already here in japan so it's not a way to say oh if you don't have any of these things pack up and leave or something or let's say you've or you're already on the plane or in your layover to japan i'm not saying if you don't have these things come back it's just a prompt you know but titling it uh, you know don't come to japan if is to make you know how important it is now for the purpose of this video i'm going to be sharing just four points so my very first point is don't come to japan if you are self-centered now i don't know if that is the right choice of word but for lack of better choice of word i will use self-centered now what do i mean by self-centered you know those kind of people that feel like the world revolves around them any other thing that concerns another person is not their business when they are worried the whole world should rally around them when you are worried they pretty much don't care or don't even want to bat an eyelid like they don't want to respect i don't know generally it's not even a life skill to have which is self-centeredness it's good to have people's back because you don't know when that gesture will come right back at you but in japan it's even beyond you just having it as a life skill it will not work Rara. now what do i mean by it will not work naturally this is not shade or anything it's just an actual fact Japanese people are very conservative, very quiet, very to themselves, very shy. So on a normal day, their primary language of communication is not to even answer anybody, not to go out all out for anybody. So if you're coming here and you have this mantra, which I have, which is that you can't do life alone, guys. You have to be friendly. Now, I'm not saying... I'm not saying that you should tag everybody a friend. Of course, you guys know I say it very well on this channel that I'm an advocate for tag people rightly. Some people are colleagues, some are acquaintances, some are lab members, some are church members, some are countrymates. But it doesn't mean you cannot be friendly to a colleague. 
be invested in other people's things too be invested in other people's life someone is having a seminar show up for the person someone is i'm not saying show up it could even just be as little as send a text message what i'm just trying to say is be also interested in other people's life because the honest truth is yes you can't do life alone but it's worse in japan because honestly if you do if you want to try to do life alone in japan you'll get very lonely it will get very boring now a very typical example i'm going to give is that i was discussing with a church member that was last month thereabouts and she's a foreigner actually but she's married to a japanese man and she was like she doesn't she if she remembers herself well she wasn't as friendly or as vocal as she currently is but are coming to japan and seeing how the average japanese person is she had to be more friendly don't like everybody's your friend but just more friendly because if not more nobody's gonna send you right and when she said it i just immediately said exactly now somebody has said it i don't know if i would tag myself as completely extroverted before coming to japan at the same time i'm not completely introverted but one thing i always tell people is i like to ask how are you genki are you fine are you sure are you okay are you okay? because someday you will need that energy back you guys have heard me say several times on this channel that you know my professor will see me sensitive to me and ask me choma are you fine are you okay it's not like i have not planted some seed I don't know how to explain this point now last week as at the time i'm making this video last week monday i had a presentation and when the timetable came out it was nine to nine from nine a.m was when i was slated for and honestly when i saw that timetable i remember telling my husband that ah, this nine that they put me i'm sure nobody is going to show up so it's a subtle it's not by force but there is this unconscious lab culture in our lab whereby if someone is having a presentation especially if it is within school premises or around the axis of school you go all out and just like the lab members you know it's not mandatory but you know please just support you know show your support but when i saw that 9 a.m i remember telling my husband ah nine people still be sleeping guys guess what tell me why 9 a.m people were running to come and show support to me i mean japanese people some of these people don't have my phone number but there's just that there's just that investment in you there's just that it's chioma like i don't know i'm not sitting here to pay myself as a saint see guys i have my four shots i have i'm not a perfect person but one thing i always keep in mind is that see invest in people you will need them one day even when i was moving apartment when i had my bad terrible terrible neighbor issue my worst experience so far in japan and i have shared that on this channel you guys heard me where i said it was a japanese neighbor that stood for me fought with me fought for me made sure i was safe helped me move apartment and that would that just came from a very simple hello like you know sometimes it's really not that deep you don't have i'm not saying call the person morning till night and sometimes you know ask people to are you fine you know some other thing that really really have stood out to me in recent times is that people that have graduated in my lab like i'm talking about people that are working have no ties with the lab anymore send me messages oh choma it's been a while i heard you had a presentation how did it go and i'm so like oh my god you didn't have to but you did some of the notes i get when people are graduating say things in the line of thank you for always smiling sometimes i have a bad day and you light up my mood like sometimes people are not asking for so much so sometimes step out of your head and look out for another person you don't have to be besties with the person but just don't be a me myself and i kind of person is one way for you to enjoy this country I'm not also saying do this thing because you want people to go back to you, give because you mm -mm. be just be a kind person. That's just it. My second point is don't come to Japan if you are a close minded person. If you're not open minded. See guys, I know. Funny enough, I don't know if I am the only person that did not hear this so much stereotype about Japan and Japanese people. But since starting YouTube, I have had so many assumptions. I've had so many stereotypes. Japanese people are this. Japanese people are that. Japan is this. Japan is that. I'm not also saying don't make an informed decision. Don't know about the place you're going to. I'm just saying don't come with a battle-ready mindset. Affect the quality of life. Now, what do I mean? 
you've heard so many things japanese people like this so much so that when you come let's say you have a good professor like the person is telling you something and someone you heard you're already ready for a fight mm, he will soon change so it's better by just start showing him my character and no 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 no, no these people are not good i've heard their story see sometimes just be open-minded there's so many things open-mindedness does to you it helps you enjoy the place now i'm speaking for this one i'm speaking from experience when i first came to japan i wouldn't say i heard so many things about japan from nigeria but when i arrived you know i just started being so close-minded see eh if somebody had told me in my first year of landing my step my feet in this country that almost five years later i will still be in this country i'll say it's a lie me, I'll say Lila is not true. Like somewhere in my head, no, Japan, Japan this, Japan, no, Japan, ah, Japan. Any smart in that first year, me, I would just say Japan, Japan, Japan. And what it did to me is I closed my mind. I wasn't open to trying. I even remember so many things that Tabby would stretch out an invitation to me for or the lab is doing. And somewhere in my head, I'm just like, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. No, 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 no. It just makes you not enjoy the place. One mantra I now live by is... Even if I am going to be staying in a place for two months, for three months, for one month, I'm going to try my possible best to make it a home. Because guys, trust me, one month of depression can take you 10 years of therapy. Because you don't be thinking, eh, I'm just here for one year. Even if you're just here for one year, how about you just be open-minded? How about you drop the battles? How about you just try and tell yourself, okay, I'm going to see them for them. I'm going to ask questions. I'm not going to flip at everything. Always remember, always remind yourself, this is also the perks of being open-minded, that their culture is not your culture. If there is anything I know I've said on this channel a lot, a lot and a lot, is that Japan is so different. See, I don't know any country that is similar. I've been to some places and I will tell you for free, for fact, I've not seen a place that is similar like Japan. So just come with, don't come with that mindset of every little thing. This is not how we do it though. You're just so close-minded. Every small thing, this is not how we do it in my place. I'm not also saying lose your individuality. Eh -eh. That's how you strike a balance with accepting people, being a bit open-minded. Okay, let me understand. Why do they reason like this? See, when you hear me communicating with some of my acquaintances in the lab, we have real heart-to-heart -heart talks. I'm just like, eh, but... Why do Japanese people do not say, eh, Chioma ma, is because, you know, growing up, they will not ask me to, eh, but why do Nigerians, do? I'll be like, eh, you know, as Nigerians, be open-minded, be willing to know, why do they do things, how, why, why is it different, I'm not from a battle riding mindset of, that's not how they do it though, don't do it like that though, it's going to really affect your quality of life, even if you say, oh, I'm here for just one year, don't make the one year a miserable one year. I was in America for one month. I kept telling myself, one month is too long to be so sad. So whenever I had anybody reach out in the lab, oh, Chema, we are going bowling. Chema, I'll be like, okay, I'll try my best. I'm not saying lose your individuality, but just be open-minded. Don't go with a battle-ready mindset. Eh, I heard Americans are like this. Eh, I heard Japanese people are like this. Eh, just, just don't go with an, a closed mind. Now, my third point is, don't come to Japan if... You are not a DIY person. <laughs> By DIY person, I mean do it yourself. And this is quite debatable. Honestly, this is debatable. I just put this in here because looking back, the chilo that came here in 2018 and the chilo of 2023 is not the same. There are so many things I now do for myself, do by myself, and I'm like, ah, I've moved, I've grown, I've come a long way. Now, what do I mean by DIY? I was watching a YouTube video. Cassie Davis is it on YouTube or her Insta story? She and her husband recently relocated to Canada and um, from Nigeria, and she was saying she had been hearing a lot about when you go abroad, you're going to do a lot of things yourself. You know, this assembling of things you assemble in Nigeria, you call a carpenter and all. And she was saying her, saying herself, ah, she can't wait. And now that she's here, she can now see the reason, guys. See, eh? It is almost impossible to remove staying in these countries and remove doing some things yourself. Aside, aside saving costs, like now, hair. Take for instance, this hair I made it myself. I know it doesn't look like I have hair on, and that's 
the concept or the idea of this hair i have clippings and i think the video has already gone up by now my previous hair which was a ponytail i did it myself my crochet i did it myself the hair i took to singapore and us i did it myself right now i'm not saying do everything yourself and burn out and mice money and not do anything i mean some of you found my channel here because of the black girl doing hair black girl series so you know i go to salon too but there are just some times where aside the cost the convenience like back home in nigeria right i mean it's not everywhere but i used to live in yaba and there was this amazing hairstylist i use around the yaba axis sometimes i don't even need to make an appointment i just go to the salon she has space small space she will trip me inside so you don't really need the strict appointment here in japan guys sometimes you might go and the whole month there is no space so sometimes guys you really just have to do learn on learn that mindset of i can't do it this thing i'm saying as funny as it is i have some people that i still communicate with back at home that tell me ah you made the hair by yourself huh I try, you know, me, I cannot do. I'm just telling myself, see, drop that mindset if you know you want to live abroad. You have to get to a point where it's not just hair, so many other things. I feel like this particular point is not only a Japan thing because most of my friends that are living in different parts of the world say the same thing. Drop that mindset that you cannot do anything like DIY is for people that are trying to mise money. Sometimes it's not just that. Yes, there's money part. Yes, there's convenience part. But sometimes too it's just i don't know it's just a culture it's something you have to get used to and my last point which is my fourth point here is do not come to japan if you don't know how to enjoy or have fun by yourself i feel like this is very see japan is very 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 at the very and keep going as you're watching this video till the video ends keep saying very quiet and one thing that comes with quietness too is loneliness sometimes if you're not careful so you have to learn to romanticize your life you have to learn to have fun by yourself i remember after i got married i got few compliments from friends and acquaintances say ah at least now you know you'll not be lonely and i'm just like lonely is such a, such a strong word if there was anybody that was not lonely living alone it was me ha even there was there's this association i belong to and during the pandemic period when they were asking people how are you coping somebody was like ah it's the single people and pity you know and i'm just like single people bow we are even the ones enjoying we are not dealing with anybody we are sleeping waking up eating do what we want to do romanticize your life make your house a home have fun like take yourself out like be happy yes it's possible to be friendly with people but there are not so many activities i go to someone's house in this country you have to inform the person how many weeks ahead everybody is busy everybody is tired everybody is stressed now aside the fact that there are not so many activities out there even if you you now decide to make an activity and invite people some people are just so busy so if you are the kind of person that don't that you know you've tied your joy or you've tied your happiness around other people it's going to be hard have fun find a way to have fun. i remember that time i have so many clips of now i would play music i'll be i still do it i'll play music i'll be dancing i'll play music i'll be cooking i'll be singing i'll be doing karaoke in my house make your house a home even if you're here for one year if there are things you know will make life easier for you at home a vacuum cleaner whatever it is just make your life as easy as possible such that when you're done from done for the day from work you're not dreading going back home you are happy to go back home keep in touch with family keep in touch with family and friends back at home take yourself out buy yourself pizza buy yourself manola cook be happy by yourself find a way to make it work for yourself so much so that when an activity comes up you're excited to join if it doesn't come up you're not you're not as in do you get me thankfully this is something that i knew i cultivated even before coming to japan so i didn't struggle so much with it so these are the four points of the things i wish you know before coming 
even though i tag it i put it do not come doesn't mean that if you're already here and you're struggling with some of these points you cannot try to better it or you should go back or something like that but yeah this list is not exhaustive you guys know sometimes i just come up with this kind of series or this kind of things and see another one but for now these are the four things i can think of but if you're in japan or you're just in any country and you feel like see you have more things to draw please feel free and drop it in the comment section people are reading i don't know who you're helping thank you guys so much so 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 much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video see you next time on chilo talks bye for now guys